What is up everybody, Josh here again, and today we have a new Icarus video for you. It's an advanced Icarus farming guide. We're going to be showing you how to get 2400 Ren and 1200 Exotics per hour. Let's get into it, shall we? First thing we're going to do is go over to New and go to Missions. We're going to go over to Olympus, and you're going to scroll all the way out and go all the way to the right. When you're all the way to the right, you're gonna see this mission right here. It's in yellow called Migrating Sand Survey. This is the mission we're gonna be doing to get the exotics and Rin. So you have to be able to get to this mission. You have to go all the way through this tree and be able to get to this mission. So that means that this is not for newer players. It is a kind of more advanced guide, but it is a great way to get exotics and Rin. And we're going to click on it. Cinetai pays for solutions. In this mission, what you have to do is go and deploy three beacons and then head to a location where the Shifting Zans or Sandworm boss is located. You can complete this mission on hard. That won't give you the 2400 Ren and 1200 exotics per hour. It'll be about 900 exotics and 1800 Ren per hour if you did it on hard. But if you do it on hardcore, you'll see you get 400 Ren and 200 exotics per run. And you could use usually do a run about every 10 minutes. One thing we'll mention is that if you do choose hardcore, there's a chance for you to lose your gear, and that will set you back for some random exotics, but you never lose your character. Of course, unless you get a res from somebody, somebody can come into your mission and help you. So what we're going to try to do with this mission is we're going to try to complete this mission as quick as possible. Let's go over what I bring. And you do need exotics and Rin to do this mission. If you don't have exotics and Rin currently, there is a mission that you can complete for exotics, the purple exotics, of course, and it's called Deep Vein Extraction. You can complete this. We do have a video on our channel if you're interested in watching that as far as getting earliest exotics in the game and getting those first exotics so you can buy your equipment and get the equipment you need for this. And of course you can get Ren from just completing missions. Missions are available to be redone as many times as you want to. Find you a mission you like, repeat it until you get the Ren you need. In the workshop, you can also sell exotics for Ren. You could sell, for example, 10 exotics will give you 50 Ren. So choose your difficulty and then claim the prospect. We're going to go over what we put in the loadout. Now there's two different loadouts we're going to go over and there's two different methods we have now. And this is for purple and for people who have red exotics. There are two different loadouts. I'm going to show you a super OP loadout with the red exotics. And then I'm going to show you this loadout right here. This is the purple exotics. So if once you get purple exotics and you get red, you could get this gear. Get you a full set of Nanio. This is going to be the highest exposure resistant gear that you can drop down with. Grab that. Grab you some mass dampeners. I like to do three. And we use the Luna and Virus Suit, which gives you the three suit modules. Stacking the speed is what we want to do. We want to be moving as fast as possible. We're going to go over the talents as well that we complement with this loadout. I use the Inaris Aruda Aram bundles. Use two of those that will give you 50 arrows. You'll need those to kill the sandworm. We also grab the Sinatai Dropship Recall Beacon. And this is crucial to helping with countering the storms and with shaving a ton of time of running back to your dropship. Also bring the 5% movement speed survival backpack. It also has the sprain duration reduction and the chance to avoid a sprain by 50%. When taking fall damage also bring the shigong juju spear and the reason for that is for the reduction in stamina consumed by sprinting and also it gives you the plus 10 percent movement speed i bring the larkwell martinez compound bow because it's one of the best bows in the purple tier and also an anti-poison vaccine too you can have the anti-poison vaccine one if you want but the anti-poison vaccine two and one both cost the same so why not just go with two for the additional time you can also use in the purple tier the Larkwell Arrow Bundle. That's going to be a very, very large damage arrow if you want to use it. It does cost about 100 Ren for two, though. And this is what the loadout should look like if you have red exotics and plenty of them. You could get the Huller and Virus Suit. This will give you four module slots, and you'll see why. And of course, we're going to be using the Nanio Armor again. We're going to be going with four mass dampeners. Yes, four mass dampeners. It does reduce a lot and does have a reduction but 
Also, you will be running super fast, trust me. We're gonna go with the survival backpack again. We're gonna keep the dropship recall beacon in this loadout and keep the Shigong Juju Spear. We're switching out to the Shigong HS2 bow. The reason why is because it's reload speed. If you notice, it's a 0.3 and it has a very beefy bow. We'll do tons of damage. We are gonna be taking only one set of the Inaris Rogue Arrows, and these are insane arrows against the Sandworm. You will see here shortly why. And I don't even really take this, but if you have a problem with the poison that the Sandworm is shooting at you, you probably shouldn't, and you'll see why here shortly. Uh, the anti-poison vaccine is optional, absolutely with the red set, trust me. You really won't need it if you go with these talents. We're gonna show you the talents that we go with. So these are the talents that I go with, and you can go with these talents. I would highly recommend doing so. This is actually a special character that I just used for this mission, and it is the, I think, one of the most efficient talent builds for doing this mission and farming it. So I'm gonna show you this. I'm not gonna go through them completely, but I will point out the most prominent or most important talents I think you should at least consider taking, and that is the chase them down in the survival and hunting category. Also love to have health bars. It gets dark in this mission because this mission is played at night. I also went down to chase them down and they gave me an additional 40% maximum stamina. You want to boost stamina and movement speed and all that good stuff because we're trying to do this as fast as we can. Over in the cooking and farming of survival, we went with one point green thumb. We had to to get down to get up and go. That is going to give us an additional 10% maximum stamina we put quite a few of our points into exploration under adventure we definitely will go with robust explorer for the maximum health and of course the movement speed swiss survivor we went with the reductions in oxygen food and thirst and went with plyometrics which decreases the stamina consumed when jumping we're going to be doing a lot of jumping in this mission we also went with storm chaser three points which gives you 30 percent stamina regeneration during a storm and 15 percent exposure resistance with weather and storm this is crucial you have to have that these are optional but we do get some additional movement speed at night this is a night mission if you do it like we're doing and additional six percent movement speed is going to help you quite a bit and you can also get an additional 15 percent reduction to food oxygen and water with like it with the lights off. We also went one point into Desert Master because we're in the desert and we'll get an additional 5% movement speed on top of that. See, we're stacking a ton of movement speed here. Under Habitation, we went in Repairing. We're going to go with Ready to Work, three points. That is going to give us plus 30% stamina regeneration. That is really good. And in Combat, this character is an exclusive bow character. And you can see all the points that we spent in here. The reasons why are because arrow speed, reload speed, all the these talents are going to decrease the time it takes you to kill the sandworm, going with the critical damage and everything you see here. We're also going to be using the solo tree, and I'm going to show you what we went with the solo. We're not going to go over everything, but you could take a look at all this, especially the HPs, especially the stamina. Then movement speed is crucial. I like to do bows. I'm a bow character. I highly would suggest going with these talents that we've shown you. And this was really just for reasons. I, yeah, I just have so many points left. I don't really need to spend them. But try to at least have these points spent and then spend the rest of the points in whatever you want. So once you got your loadout here, just like this, we're going to go ahead and confirm the loadout and start up the mission. While I'm dropping down, I like to bring up my map and put me a little marker down here. You don't have to do this because there are markers in the mission, but you can put your little marker there just to see where you're gonna go to the first objective. We're gonna wait until the dropship finish dropping. We're gonna take all of our items here and we're gonna go ahead and take your anti-poison vaccine and consume our stacks and organize anything you want to organize the way you want. You have to go and get your beacons. You're going to look at the very top of your screen and see the compass. And you're going to go towards your beacon to get your three beacons you need to place for this mission. We also can grab some fiber and sticks here so we can make a torch if you want to end up making a torch. It's up to you. It's completely optional. I'm going to go and grab these three beacons from the drop pod here. We're going to hit take all. Hit our inventory and control left click and throw those on our bar. 
And we're going to bring our Juju Spear and start heading towards the little purple icon you've seen up top, heading southeast. And we're going to jump. Jumping regenerates your stamina whenever you have biometrics and helps you regenerate stamina quite a bit while you're doing this mission. So you're going to get storms in this mission. You're going to get all kinds of different variables. You're going to get stuff aggro you. Uh, it's going to get dark. You're not going to be able to see that very well. You're going to want to try to keep your stamina topped off. You don't want to get the stamina drained or stamina depleted because that takes a little bit longer to regenerate your stamina. We're heading towards this first purple icon. And once we get down here, we're going to hit one of the numbers for our beacon there. Should be able to do it now. And we're just going to place the beacon and keep running. We're going to head northeast. And you'll see the new purple icon up top. Just follow that. You're going to want to jump down this cliff here. Are these dunes. We're going to come up to... Some plateaus there to your left. If you look over towards the left and you see there is a large plateau there, you can drop it here. That's perfectly fine. We're going to head southeast and go to the next purple beacon location. Now we're going to come up to this ridge over here and that is where the boss is going to spawn right over there in that area. And we're going to drop our drop ship while we're going to the third beacon. Sometimes you get lucky and you don't get a storm. But if you do get a storm and you need to shelter yourself, you're going to be using your drop ship to do so. We'll show you how. Bring out our juju again and continue towards the purple beacon. All right. And we're going to place the beacon here and head northwest and you'll see a little star icon up top there and we're going to head towards that that's going to be the sandworm boss you make sure you have your anti-poison on you and we're going to be trying to hit the sandworm boss with some criticals with the bow we're going to show you a few different methods and how to beat the boss so once he comes up the first time you can get a crit on him so you give his mouth like so you're going to try to stay out of his melee range so he doesn't hit you. And once he lunges or opens his mouth, you're going to try to shoot him in the mouth. You can also stay back much further and have him shoot poison at you. The poison is going to make you take a little bit of damage, but it's nothing too bad. Unless you see a really big, large poison glob, you might want to want to avoid that one. I like to keep him in melee range, and actually, if you get really good used to it, you can actually get quite a few crits on him, like so. And you also don't get hit by poison, just in case you get hit by something else, like a hyena or a scorpion. Scorpions and hyenas are notorious in this area, and cougars, so keep an eye out for those. Once he comes back up, you can get a crit. Once he first comes up, we're going to keep him out of melee range there. When he does that, you can actually grab all your arrows back. If you have running low on arrows, you probably won't be. And then you can shoot him. There's our storm. Got us a medium sand. That is the absolute worst storm for you to get into. And it's kind of towards the end of the mission. You see, we get 400 Ren and 200 Exotics, and it has only been about eight minutes. Um, so, what we're going to do first is we're going to head back to our dropship. 
and we're gonna go ahead and upload. Say at any point in time while you're doing this mission and you get stuck into a storm, like a medium sand or a light sand. Heat waves are not that bad, but we're gonna go ahead and show you how to mitigate storms. And this is, you can go ahead and drop your drop pod wherever you want, but I'd always try to suggest putting it somewhere towards D13 and around in this area right here, this is where the sandworm boss spawns and you want to get out of here as soon as you kill the boss. Usually I, whenever I grab enough fiber, I can make me like a thatch roof or ramp just in case I need to get inside of the ship. And then also you can also make you a little wood rack torch as well. If you land in kind of a flat area like this, then you should be able to get inside of it pretty easily. And what you'll do is you'll just jump towards the middle there. It might take you a few tribes to get up in there, like so. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna kinda go in the very, very middle where you would spawn into the game. And that's gonna be right here in the sea. It's a really, really small spot, but you'll see there is a spot there. So kinda if you look straight downwards and you see a little cursor in the middle there, once that gets to the edge of the chair there, that little white dot there, that's the sheltered portion. And this works for every single storm that you get. So if you need to mitigate storms, you can use this method to counter the storms. Do not die the storms. There's no reason to die the storms. Throw your beacon down wherever you are if it's a really bad storm and mitigate the storms. If you're fighting the sandworm and you have the anti poison on, you won't take really much damage at all. So you're gonna be good to go. A little tip for this is if you are moving around, look at the very top of your screen where the mission timer is. And if you move around, you'll see in the middle of the storm there where it says no shelter. And if you're moving around at that seat, like I said, just looking straight down, if you get to the very edge of it, that should get you where you need to be. But also just look at that. And if you see no shelter go away, that means you're good to go. And of course, like we said, you can make a little ramp. If you grabbed enough thatch and fiber, you can just kind of make you a ramp like that get into the ship easily by crouching and just pull up the ramp. With this method, you're also not gonna worry about water, food, or oxygen. You're not gonna need none of that because you're trying to do this in less than 10 minutes. And if you have those talents and everything we were talking about and showed you earlier, you should have absolutely no problem with water, food, or oxygen the whole entire time you're on the planet. So you don't have to worry about any of that. So now we're gonna show you the Red Exotics run. And the Red Exotics run, you're gonna be running super fast because you have all the speed and everything you need. We're also still gonna keep grabbing all the stuff. We're gonna do it pretty much the exactly the same. You're gonna be hopping as well. We've also got a heat wave as soon as we drop down on this one. So I'm gonna show you that you can survive the heat wave. We're gonna take some damage, but we're gonna try to mitigate some as well. Also with this build, you are boosting 568 movement speed. We're gonna go ahead and throw our beacon while we go to the second one. So at this point, you're going to see your storm exposure going up. If you get an early storm, you're going to be worried. Heat waves, you will live through. Don't worry. I'll show you how. If you get a light sands or a medium sands, you're going to want to go ahead and go into your dropship. Those are very hard to survive. And we're going to kind of show you how fast this is going to go. It's going to go quite, quite fast. We're going to make a little bit of stamina here, and we should be able to five shot. There he is. Okay, so we killed the sandworm. And now all we gotta do is go to our dropship and... Oh, okay, we can kill that scorpion too. I'm just gonna go to our dropship and go ahead and get out of here. Now if you look at the storm above, we're gonna go ahead and stand here until it's over. Just to kind of show you, you are gonna live through it. If you're using purple gear, try to keep the boss in melee range. That way you can actually avoid getting spit and getting damaged because you're going to be taking a little bit of damage from the storm if you're doing a heat wave. And as you can see, we survived. We did have a little bit of HP left. Yeah, the storm exposure is going off. Whenever you see the green bar before the sun, that means that you're going to be having your exposure start tampering off. So we're just going to go ahead and upload and get our exotics and Ren. And less than 10 minutes again, pretty simple. And great exotics and great rent. 
So another thing you could do with the sandworm is you can actually go up to it and stab it a few times and just back up. What it'll do is it'll do like a little spray like so. One or two times. And after one or two times you can go up and stab it again. And you could do this. You get used to it. If you get hit, it's going to hurt a little bit. But if you run out of arrows or something like this is a method you could use for the sandworm. You can also sit here and stab it with the spear if you want to do that. Like so. Like I said, don't highly suggest this as you can actually get hit and it does hurt quite a bit. But if you do run out of arrows, then this is an option. If you have a knife or the spear. So sometimes things happen and you may die. And if you are doing a hard hardcore, you could join our discord and ask for a res if you are interested in doing so. So people can come and res you also in the official Icarus discord and looking for group. There's an official looking for group rescue board. And this is where you can post about you needing a res. So you can also get a res there as well. Don't fret if you do die on hardcore it's not the end of the world you may lose your gear or you can get somebody to rescue you now let's talk cost the cost of the purple gear set is going to run you back a whopping 5175 rin and 600 exotics to unlock and 2320 rin and 600 exotics to craft this whole armor set and this loadout once you have it crafted and unlocked you'll be able to reuse all this gear repairing it ever so rarely for 10 rin the foliums you'll have to keep repurchasing and that's the vaccine the arrows and the dropship recall beacon which equals out to about 145 rin per run and of course, with the red exotic set, this is going to cost you 2,675 Ren to unlock, 850 red exotics, and 350 purple exotics. To craft the set, you're going to need 1,650 Ren, 300 red exotics, and 250 exotics. And it will only cost you 175 Ren per run after you purchase the equipment. So getting the equipment is going to be the hardest part, and you only have to dish out 145 to 175 Ren, depending on which loadout you use. You can also use insurance if you're not too confident in your abilities. It's going to take you a little bit of time to get used to, so you can actually click on insurance as well. It will reduce it by 33% and reduce the amount that you get in the end, but you will always be able to get your gear back if you were to die on hardcore. You can also just do hard and be able to respawn three times. And that's it for this video. Don't forget if you like what you see to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing will get you Icarus content videos just like this one and weekly update videos for Icarus as well when those come out. If you have any questions about Icarus or this method, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will answer the comment. We answer all of our comments. And hopefully, we'll see you next time. Peace.